Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's January 31st, 2016. And this week, we're going to do a lesson on playing lead guitar, but no theory, no thinking, just playing. And this week's question was sent in from Mike. He's out in Bloomington, Indiana, and he wrote in with this email. I want to get right into playing great lead guitar, but I don't know any theory. Is it possible to know how to solo without knowing anything about keys or a song's theory? I saw on Dave Mustaine's Twitter that he He's self-taught and he can't read notes. I think I'm going to do guitar like that and be like him too. I just can't understand how he plays so fast without knowing theory. Can you help me? From Mike in Bloomington, Indiana, USA. Well, thanks a lot for writing in, Mike. You know, first of all, I would you know be a little cautious of any famous guitar player who's had you know huge international international success. Uh, you know, making millions of dollars and who plays. Uh, you know, very complex guitar parts, both live and in the studio, uh, you know, who says that they are, you know, just self-taught and don't know anything too much about music and all that stuff. The, the reality is that even if they perhaps downplay their ability or their success and their knowledge and so forth, there's no possible way that a guitarist can compose 10 or more successful albums and not know the basics about what they're doing, you know. However, you know, it's true that many players uh, are not all that well versed with, you know, how scales work or how keys operate or maybe how modes are applied. So in this lesson, we're going to explore playing lead without real analysis or theory. We're just going to take small, basic uh, groupings of notes and kind of mess around with them in a few different positions and have a real lighthearted approach with it that is going to really be directed in long term at developing your ear so that you have an easier time understanding how things are moving around on the guitar fingerboard. So it's not really about the theory, it's just going to be about fingerboard layout, shapes, and using your ear. So let's get started by zooming in the neck and checking out some of the common shapes that a lot of guitar players will start with early on, but may not even know whether it's a major scale or a minor scale or what it is. So let's zoom in on the neck and start checking this stuff out. Well, in a lot of cases, a guitarist will initially start to learn how to play leads and solos through the discovery of certain fingerboard shapes played in specific locations on the neck. Now, quite often, these locations will be tied to two of the most common keys used in guitar music, which are, of course, the keys of uh, E minor and A minor. And the open sixth and fifth strings also happen to be E and A. Uh, you might guess that they happen to be a big part of a lot of uh, blues and rock tunes that you'll learn in the early days of guitar playing. Now in the first example, I want to demonstrate two extremely common single note outlines found in these keys at two very popular neck areas that oftentimes students will begin working within in the very early days of playing guitar. They'll be the seventh position on the neck as well as the 12th position. All right, so the first shape that I want to run through with you is a really common shape. Probably a lot of you will already know something like this. Uh, you know, you'll come to hear these tones early on with even no prior scale knowledge. Uh, they're gonna be tones based around an E minor sound uh, in the seventh position region. So we're going to have our first batch of notes there. So I'm sort of working around some notes on the upper string there. Coming into that uh, second string, playing 10th, 8th, and 7th frets, that's going to give me that A, the G, and then that F sharp, which is in the key of E minor. And then you have your uh, E tone and the D behind it. That's giving me my sound of the E minor color. So next thing I'd like to do, uh, working around the same position here, is just quickly take a look at another common run of notes. This time it's gonna be from uh, the other popular key center, the key of A minor. So around this area, we do have our A root located on fourth string, seventh fret. There's also another A octave in that region on second string, 10th fret. So I'm gonna start up there and play through uh, a cluster of these notes. And 
That's a very common group of notes working around the sounds of A minor. Now keep in mind that most often a guitarist will learn shapes something like these, maybe even not this large, maybe there's smaller shapes like this, but still really have little to no idea what they are. They won't know if the pattern that they lifted off of, let's say maybe a Jimi Hendrix tune or some you know portion of a lick that they took out of an ACDC riff or something, they won't know what it is. They won't know if it's a major scale or a minor scale or some, uh, even a mode like Dorian mode or something. All a player in the early days will go off of is their ear, you know, an understanding of the shape of whether it sounds good over certain riffs. You know, you might get, uh, you know, together with a buddy of yours and, you know, you're riffing out you know, some kind of E, you know, and, you know, idea like that. And you find a few tones and you realize, hey, you know what, that part of that Hendrix song that I worked out that section of notes really works well around here. So you, your ear is being your guide. So I want to check out a couple more of these common single note run ideas that are often learned very early on, but this time we're going to go up higher on the neck. We're going to be in the 12th position. I want to start up here with the uh, E minor and uh, we're going to work off of the E tone focused at the 14th fret of the fourth string. And there's also an octave of that E tone way up there at the 12th fret of the first guitar string. All right, so here's the uh, idea. So it's so a rather large run of notes that I put together there, but that is a very popular position that many beginner uh, lead players, or even just people experimenting with melody up around the higher end of a uh, electric guitar are going to discover those tones because they're just so common. They're in so many rock and blues songs, it's crazy. Um, so what we're gonna do next is move over to the key of A minor as well. Uh, this is another uh, group of notes that's quite popular. The A root that we're we're going to use is going to be found here at the 14th fret of the third string and we're also going to uh, play up as high as the octave uh, over here 17th fret of that first guitar string so uh, here's the run of notes So, you know, even if you just have a, a semi-decent level of picking skill, you can learn small groups of uh, scale pattern ideas like this right away, and you do not have to know any of the theory for them. So uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, take a look at some uh, jam progression. So we're going to come back in a moment. I'm going to have some loops organized, and we're going to check out how to apply these sort of random shapes. Once a guitar player learns shapes that resemble something like the shapes we've been going over here, they can actually go a really long way in respect to making up a lot of different types of solos and playing all kinds of lead ideas without even really knowing tons of theory, you know, key signatures, how modes are applied, arpeggios, you know, all these principles surrounding the rules of harmony and theory. So, you know, you can test this out by just having some fun. And, uh, you know, I, cre I created a uh, common riff idea that's in the key of E minor, and, uh, you know, we're going to mess around with it. But even that knowledge, and knowing that it's in E minor, even that knowledge isn't really critical to understand. I've worked with a lot of guitar players over the years that were not educated very much at all, but yet they had great feel and they could, you know, play gigs and they, you know, they, they were really uh, good at what they did, but it was just simple and it, they stayed in the pocket and they didn't exceed their limitations, you know, and they're, they're fine. Now, in the riff that I'm going to mess around with here, it's just a real common sounding uh, idea in E minor. Uh, he'll play it for you, give you an idea how it sounds. It goes like this. you know kind of a common idea where we're in the key and we're just sort of dropping whole steps away from the root and it's very minor oriented and what we're going to do is mess around with those seventh and twelfth position E minor patterns that we had looked at uh, so first of all um, what I want to do is uh, just fire up the loop pedal give you a chance to hear that in the background and I'm, I'm just going to be playing very simple in the seventh and the twelfth frets using those uh, E minor shapes that we had covered earlier so uh, here we go
So as you can tell, you know, I'm just sort of goofing around in both those positions. I'm using only really the notes that we had covered. And um, you, know, you can come up with a lot of ideas. I, I mean, most of the playing in your early days is focused around physical attributes. And you're doing bends, you're sliding, you're trying to find out repeating patterns that sound kind of interesting. You know, you're doing hammer-ons and pull-offs and coming up with melodic statements that will eventually kind of be your signature melodic statements and other techniques uh, that you'll come across. There's, you know, some pedal point things I was doing in there. So there's a lot of cool little ideas you stumble upon just from getting in intuitive and using your ear and just having fun. So uh, we're going to come back in just a moment and we're going to do something very similar that we just did, but we're going to shift it over to the world of A minor. Well, you know, these simple small note groupings, they can really go a long way. And, and again, you don't need to know or understand a ton of music theory. You don't even need to know or understand the progression that you're playing over, you know, whether it's an E minor, an A minor, or whatever. You just test one of the groups of notes out, and if that group doesn't sound right, play another group. If it's still not sounding right, shift it along the neck into other locations. A lot of players will get to know locations of where to dump their scale uh, outlines off of uh, chord shapes. You know, so if you know this minor chord or you know that minor chord, you can figure out how your scale shapes sit around those different chords and, and all that and you know, know how to play around uh, almost a, more of a, a visual cue off of a chord shape. Uh, but you know, as you're doing this, you want to make sure that uh, that you're having fun and you're you're jamming on things and you keep your interest level up. If you're not into playing solos and you're just finding all this kind of work really boring and uh, tiresome, uh, maybe it's not right for you to do. Maybe you're more of a rhythm guitar player. Maybe you just want, should transcribe songs or something. You know, you just do what you find is fun, and you'll always keep your interest at a real high level. But uh, all the while, you know, anything you do, you're developing your ear, and most of all, too, you're especially with improvisation you're developing a sense of intuition of where to take a note should you go higher should you dump, you know dump it lower or tr you know cross over to another string change strings and you know, all that kind of thing and uh, of course too there's the other side of this of down the road as time goes on you may want to gain a better and better understanding of music theory you may hear somebody play something really interesting and they say maybe in an interview if it's a famous guitar player or something they say hey that's a Dorian mode or a Mixolydian mode and that might really pique your interest to learn more and more on how the this stuff operates but uh, you know in time things start to click for everybody and uh, you know whether it's a major idea a minor idea you'll start to get to know some kind of perspective on how it's applied now what I want to do next is I have an A minor jam that I'd like to go through with you it's uh, a progression that's going to be working off of an A minor triad in the uh, fifth position and then we're going to drop down to an F coverage with the A in the bass though and it moves up from F to a G so the important thing is here through all the progression the A stays static down there off of the open fifth guitar string. that in the background and uh, you could tell that's a pretty typical sounding minor idea rock idea it's you know used in a lot of styles and I'm going to uh, fire up the loop pedal because I've got that riff uh, in the loop pedal the progression is, is going to run in the background give you a chance to hear how things sound when we jam over it using those a minor scale tone layouts that we had and I'm just going to take uh, this uh, live in the studio end of the video out uh, by me just uh, fooling around with a minor patterns along the neck so here we go.
know, jamming on riffs in the early years of learning how to solo is uh, some of the most fun that a guitarist can have on this instrument. And, you know, as you just saw, there's no need to invest countless hours of study on multiple positions, scale layouts and arpeggios and interval theory and harmonic analysis or, you know, complex subjects like, you know, why Mixolydian mode might offer a new direction against, say, Dorian and all that, you know. Sometimes even throwing all that stuff, I find as a teacher at a student just turns them off and they get really bored and they just, you know, are not interested. Uh, in fact, all it takes really is just a few notes uh, and some time spent jamming with maybe a looper pedal over a progression or maybe, you know, working with another guitar player, which would obviously be more fun. And, you know, in those early days, you're just building your ears to be able to listen closely to how uh, phrases sound and you know, how you're going to manipulate them using your intuition, you know, and how you're going to use phrasing devices like bends and slides and pull-offs and all that stuff. And, you know, this leads to the development eventually of all the music theory. It, if you're interested in it, it comes along. It just may come along at a different rate and pace for one person as opposed to another person. So, you know, if it becomes an interest, obviously study it further and get to know how it all operates because it does pay off a lot uh, the more theory that you know and understand. Well, anyway, that's what all the time that I have for today. As always, I want to say thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and if at all possible, consider a small donation to help fund the Guitar Lessons Project here. Uh, otherwise, have yourself a really great week and I will catch up with you next time. Bye for now. I'd like to take a moment to mention another guitar video lesson project I've started. It's a unique guitar lesson approach that I'm doing online and it's not like anything I've done before. Best of all, it's 100% free. I've called this approach Guitar Micro Lessons, and they're a great way to learn a few new licks or riffs or chord shapes each week. Now, these Guitar Micro Lessons are quick and easy to learn from. They're very short, with each lesson running between only a minute and a half to two minutes in length. They're published to YouTube from Monday to Thursday on my other Guitar Blog Update YouTube channel, and you can either subscribe to that channel to guarantee getting each new episode, or just visit the channel whenever it's convenient for you and check out the new Micro Lessons in the playlist on the Guitar Blog Update channel's homepage. If you'd like to learn the modes and really get an understanding how they can be used musically to write songs, play a solo, or compose melody lines, then you're in luck. My ebook, Using the Major Scale Modes, is a comprehensive manuscript outlining exactly how modes are used both in harmony and to compose melodic ideas. Over 50 pages of scale patterns, example progressions, and music theory all create one of the most comprehensive methods on the modes available. Using the major scale modes is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.